In this presentation, we will take a look at a partnership liquidation in which one partner will end up with a negative capital count and have to pay back the partnership within the liquidation process. So here's going to be our data. The profit sharing split is a 3 2 1 split. That means that we're going to have to use a ratio in order to see what the split will be, the ratio will be, or the percent will be between K's capital, C's capital, and M's capital, our three owners. The way we do this is we take the 3 plus the 2 plus the 1, adding up to 6, and then we just compare each to the 6. So the 3 belongs to K, the uh, 2 belongs to C, and the 1M. Therefore, we just take the 3 over the total 6, and we get the 50% capital distribution or capital sharing for K. If we take the 2 over 6, we get the 0.333 on forever, this being the reason why we can't use a percent but must use a fraction. And then we'll take the 1 over 6, and that'll give us the 0.1666 on forever once again, that being the reason we need a fraction rather than a percent. You need to understand how to calculate those because if we don't understand that, can't move forward with many partnership problems. So that's going to mean that we have a 50%, about a 33.33 for C, and about a 16.67 profit sharing that we'll be using throughout the liquidation process. Then we have basically our trial balance here listed out in a table format. We will also see the trial balance in terms of a trial balance format, but it's useful to see in a table format because often presented in practice and in book problems in table format. When we see it in a table, they're also often going to um, condense numbers and call everything uh, assets accounts and, and uh, uh, liability accounts rather than having the account names. It's useful to have the account names, so we're just going to make a very small uh, actual example of accounts here so we can see uh, the actual accounts and not just generic names of assets and then liabilities. So what we have is we've got cash at the 182500 we got inventory, the other asset 530000 liability accounts payable 240 and then the capital accounts for kc and m at 93,212,500 and 167,000 respectively we can see that this is in essence the accounting equation assets minus liabilities equals uh, equity or assets equal liabilities plus equity so the assets here are 182.5 plus the 530 gives us one seven uh seven twelve five hundred for the cash and inventory that should be equivalent to the liabilities and equity who we owe that to as the company two hundred and forty thousand liability and then the capital accounts at ninety three thousand and two hundred twelve five plus the one sixty seven giving us that seven hundred twelve five hundred so we're basically when we use a table format we're basically just doing an accounting equation format then we're going to say we're going to sell the assets. Remember, we always have to do this in order, meaning we're going to sell the assets. We're going to apply the gain or loss on sale to the capital accounts in accordance with their profit sharing. Then we'll check if there's any problem with negative capital accounts, which here there will be. And then we'll deal with that problem. Then we'll pay off the liabilities with the cash that we get. Then we will pay the partners. We really have to go in that order because that will cause the least amount of problems problems such as negative capital accounts which even going in this order will not always remove all those problems but if there is a negative capital account we want it to be as a result of uh, just the process and not our fault and that means that we're not going to pay the owners before we sell the inventory because that will just make things worse if we don't sell the inventory or the assets uh, at book value so if we go through this, then we're going to sell the assets. We're going to say that we're selling them for 320000 and they're on the books for 530000 Clearly, we have a loss here. So we're going to take them off the books and uh, take the inventory off the books. Then we're going to split the difference between the partners in accordance with their profit sharing agreement. So if we pull out the calculator here, we're going to say that we had the 530 thousand that we sold or that's what the uh, assets were on the books for the inventory minus 320 which is all we can get for them during this clearance sale gives us a loss of 210,000 50 percent of that's going to go to k so i'm going to say times 0.5 that'll give us the 105 
If I do that same thing, 530,000 minus 320,000, 210,000. If I multiply it times 0.3333 times 0.3333, it's close, not exact. That's the problem with the percentage here. We can use a fraction, however, and that would be the same 210 times, remember what it was, 2, I can say times 2 over uh, over the 6, 2 over 6. So that'll give us the more exact 70,000. So remember what we're talking about, 2 sixths. So I'm taking the 210 times 2 sixths, 2 over 10, 210 times 2 divided by 6. So that's going to give us the 70. And then one more time, we're going to do this one more time. We've got the 210,000. Then again, if I say times 0.1667, close, not exact. If I was to say 210,000 times the ratio of 1 divided by 6, we get 35,000 more exact. So there's the 35,000 more exact number. Then we're going to bring down the balances, the cash uh, that we received, 502,500. Inventory then going down to zero. Accounts payable just being pulled down. Capital accounts is 93,000 minus 105,000 for K, bringing us to a negative capital account. That's the problem. And then C is having a capital account of 212,500 minus 70,000 or 142,500. M's capital account 167,000 minus 35,000 or 132,000. Here is our problem, K has a negative capital account. So this could happen, we did everything properly and we still ended up in negative capital account. Why? Because we sold the assets and we didn't get as much for them as was reported on the books for those assets, therefore resulting in a loss, that loss being allocated, bringing a, ne a positive capital account, flipping it to negative. So now we gotta go to K and say, hey K, you know, we're closing the company, we did everything we could and you're capital account went negative would you you know pay the partnership so we can go through the, the closing process properly and hopefully they should because that's part of the closing process so they owe the, the company so we're gonna say that uh, K pays the company 12,000 that would be the nice thing to happen uh, because it's a closing process we're liquidating partnerships are closing everything not always the nicest time in practice uh, it may be an issue to get that 12000 and we'll take a look at a, at a case of what would happen if we don't get the 12000 at least from an accounting standpoint. And then we're going to reduce the 12000 for capital for K, bringing it to zero. So our new balance is going to be the 502500 plus 12000 for cash, bringing us to 514500 We bring down the accounts payable at the 240000 The K's capital is going to zero. And then we're just going to bring down the other two capitals for C and M at 142,500 and 132,000 respectively. Then we're going to say we're going to pay off the liability. That's going to be the next step we want to do. We of course will pay it with cash. Liabilities on the books for 240,000. We're taking it off the books for 240,000. That's how much cash we will be paying. So we're going to pay out the 240,000 cash. So the 514, 500 minus the 240,000, we're going to pay off two accounts payable. Whoever we owe leaves us with a balance in cash of 274,500. The accounts payable going from 240 down by 240,000 to zero. Then the capital accounts we're just going to bring down at 142,500 and the 132,000 for C and M, respectively. Now we finally have this last step that we've been looking forward to, which we can finally pay out the partnership and be done with the partnership. So we have the 274,500, which will be equivalent to the 142,500 and uh, the 132,000. So our accounting equation has always been in balance here as we go through this process. So now we can just pay it out in accordance with their capital accounts. Note as we do this, that these two are not in the same ratio as the 3 to 1, of course. And so don't get in the, in the thought process that they have to be in that same ratio because that's only profit sharing. Doesn't account for draws, doesn't account for investments. So the capital accounts will almost never be in alignment with the same kind of uh, profit sharing percentages. 
So then that'll give us our zero balances that we have been looking for. We'll do that same process now with journal entries. It's very helpful to do this in both kind of ways. A lot of book problems will show this format here. And in practice, when you're working with lawyers and whatnot, they tend to like to see a table more than a trial balance. When we work in on the accounting side of things, of course, I tend to see a trial balance better. It's easier for me to work through this with a trial balance and actually work through the journal entries to see what would happen if we go through this closing process. And of course, when we actually record this, we will need to do so. We'll need to see the journal entries and actually record them uh, in a journal entry type format typically. So uh, here's our journal and here's our trial balance. It's got the debits in uh, non-bracketed numbers, the credits in bracketed numbers. Debits minus the credits equals zero, meaning debits do equal the credits. Assets in green, liabilities in orange, equity is in the light blue. The income statement accounts of revenue and expenses in dark blue. Note that there are no revenue and expenses in this problem. In essence, we have a post-closing trial balance. That means that we must have the revenue and expenses closed out to the capital accounts. Otherwise, the capital accounts will not be properly valued when we start the problem. So we're going to go through this now and go through the same steps as the table we did above. We're going to say that the cash is, is what we're going to receive when we sell the inventory. We only got 320. We're going to increase cash by the 320 in our journal entry. The credit's going to be for the 530 to take inventory completely off the books. The debit minus the credit is not in balance. We're going to put that as we normally would when it wasn't in a closing process to a gain or loss, in this case loss. So we had a loss on the sale of the 210,000. Now in the table, we just allocated those directly to the owners. But typically when we do a journal entry in practice, that would be going to a gain or loss. So this probably looks more normal in a journal entry format. So let's do this in a two-step process. We'll record the loss and then we'll close out the loss to the capital accounts in accordance with their profit sharing agreement, taking us to that same format we had prior to this. So if we post this out then, we're going to say that the cash here is going to go to the cash here. It started at 182500 It's going to go up by 320000 to a balance of 502500 Then we have the inventory in our journal entry here, going to the trial balance here. It started at 530000 going down with a credit by 530000 to zero. And then we've got the gain or loss down here on the income statement going from zero up in the debit direction, similar to an expense bringing down net income by 210,000 to 210,000. So if we look at everything now, we've zeroed out our inventory. That's our first step. And uh, we, we received the cash that we could get for that. And we put now this loss on the books though. And remember we said that we have to close out all income statement accounts in order to move forward with the closing process. That will then be our next step, just like well, to move forward with the liquidation process. So that will be our next step, similar to a closing process. So we're just going to close out this gain or loss to, which is a loss in this case, to the capital accounts in accordance with their profit sharing agreement. So we're just going to take this 210, close it out in accordance with the profit sharing. So we're going to credit the 210, so we'll put that on the bottom, and we're going to debit K, uh, C, and M capital accounts in accordance with profit sharing. So we're going to say that uh, we had the 210, we're taking this 210, 210,000 times the 0.33. Again, uh, that's an estimate and that was for C. So it's not quite exact because it's really 0.3333. It should be 70,000. But that's, you know, we should use the ratio to get more exact. Same as we did with the table. And then we take the 210,000 times 0.5, and that'll give us the amount that's going to go to K. And then we'll take the 210,000 times the 0.17, and that'll give us close to the amount that would go to M. So again, that would be the 70, the 35, uh, that would go to K, C, and M, 105, the 70, and the 35. So then just remember that we did use the rounding here. If we use the fraction, it would be exact just as we did with the table. If we post this out, then we're going to post this. We're going to say that uh, the capital count started at uh, 93,000 for K in the credit side. Then we debited it doing the opposite thing to it, bringing it down. 
not only to zero but beyond zero to a negative capital account. This is the most confusing thing to look at, you know, when we look at the trial balance because uh, we typically think of the capital accounts as having a normal credit balance, which they typically do. So if you ever see a capital account that has a debit balance, it's a problem typically. It means that uh, the, the owner owes the business money or the partnership money. Uh, and that's basically what this means in this case. Then we're going to say the 70000 here is going to be posted to this area. So the 212500 seized capital goes down in the debit direction by 70000 to 142500 then the 35,000 here is going to be posted to the capital account here on the trial balance. The 167,000 going down by 35,000 to 132,000. Then we've got the loss that's going to be uh, taken care of or removed. It's at 210,000 debit. We're going to credit it 210,000 bringing it to zero. So if we see our trial balance now, here is our problem. We've got this uh, negative capital. We're back to all zeros on our trial balance so we can move forward. But now we have to say halt. We have to stop here and go, hmm, there's a negative capital. We got to take care of that somehow. Talk to Kay and see if he wants to repay it. If he does, great. Then we can move forward. That's what we're going to do here. So now we're going to say we got to take care of this negative capital. How he's going to pay us or he or she's going to pay us $12,000 and that'll bring the capital account back to zero. And so basically investing money into the company and the partnership, even though it's closing, uh, as part of the liquidation process. So if we post that then, the cash is gonna go back up to 514,500. Um, and that's basically because of course this 12,000 is owed to the other two partners or to some liability that hasn't yet been paid. So um, that's the case responsibility to, to pay that back. So then we're going to reduce the uh, capital account back down to zero. Again, we can you can kind of think of it as we're bringing it back up to zero because this is a negative capital account. So it's a debit balance. We're going to take the debit balance, the normal unusual debit balance, uh, down to zero by doing the opposite thing to it. So there we have it. And we're left then with cash, the accounts payable, and the two capital accounts for C and M. Now we're going to pay off the liabilities as we did in the table. We've got the accounts payable on the books at 240000 It's a credit. Therefore, we're going to debit it to make it go down. We're going to then credit cash because that's what we're going to use to pay off the account payable liability. If we post this out, then we've got the 240000 credit for accounts payable, which we will then debit, bringing it down to zero. We've got the cash here. It's going to be posted to the trial balance starting at $514,500 going down by $240,000 credit to $574,500. We're left with just cash and then the two capital accounts for C and M. So now of course the two capital accounts are equivalent to the cash and we could just pay it off and be done with this partnership. So the way we're going to do that will of course be just doing whatever we need to do to make these go down to zero. So this has a credit balance of 142500 We then will do the opposite thing to it. Debit it 142500 This has a credit of 132000 We will do the opposite thing to it. Debit it 132000 Then the cash has a debit of 174500 We will do the opposite thing to it. Credit uh, uh, 274500 Hope I said that right. But there, there we have it. And of course the two debits will equal the credits. If we post this out then, cash is going to go down to zero, capital accounts down to zero, M's capital account down to zero, and we've zeroed everything out. Again, just keep in mind that uh, I always get mixed up, or people always, I used to get mixed up a lot, that these two capital accounts should be somehow in alignment with the profit sharing. Doesn't have to be in alignment with the profit sharing. Uh, we're just going to close everything out. Whatever's in there will be closed out. What should happen is the two capital accounts should be equivalent to whatever cash is left at this point, which it must be if we are in balance.